Good day, my plan foldies. This is Richie at Grow Folds, and today I traveled to Austin, Texas, so I can take a look at some of the local plant nurseries as well as some big box stores. This is part of my um, plant tourism series where I will be traveling from North Dallas to other places around the state and possibly around the country. So three and a half travel um, hours of traveling time was well worth the drive. And I did wanna show you a top view of Mount Bonnell in Austin, Texas, absolutely gorgeous. And that's the thing about being able to do road trips and traveling to go see some other plant nurseries. I'm always able to see some different sights and sounds and as well as food. And as always, please hit the like button to, for my videos as well as subscribing to my channel. It really helps out with my um, channel's engagement and as well as growing our plant community at Grow Folds. But as you guys can see, this is the second video of my plant series. Thanks to those who watched the Great Outdoors Plant Nursery Tour Part 2 is coming up soon. So let's go ahead and go plant shopping in Austin, Texas. So the next um, plant nursery I am visiting is Tillery Street Plant um, Co. This is another um, staple of a plant nursery for local Austin people, as well as just people who are looking for some awesome plants. They've got some outdoor plants, indoor plants, succulents as well. So we're just gonna go take a look at it. I'm, I'm coming here first thing in the morning and you can see they've got some outdoor plants. And this is one plant that I was really shocked to see and amazed at the same time. These are some variegated hydrangeas. I've never seen variegated hydrangeas. You already know that um, actually as most um, plant collectors, I think most of us gravitate to variegated plants. Look at how awesome this is. This is coming out of dormancy. So you can see some of the new leaves that are coming out, but look at that cream variegation, amazing. And this is one plant that I definitely regretted not buying when I was in Austin, Texas just because I haven't really seen variegated hydrangeas available in the North Dallas um, plant nurse series as well as just even online. I mean, I can't stop looking at the beautiful variegation. Now, I've had some difficulties growing hydrangeas outdoors, but this is one I would have um, taken a risk at. And right over here, we've got a plant, a purple heart plant that's on sale for $12. But those variegated hydrangeas, I mean, that is stunning. And I love the fact that that's the first plant I really saw as I walked into the plant nursery. We can see they've got a lot of assorted plants here. The greenhouse is actually where the house plants are. But as you guys can see, they've got some plants rolled up. They have something that protects the plants from um, outside. So that's awesome that they can just roll up those sheets in case it gets cold. And we've got some um, abutilon, which are basically flowering maple. They're not really maple trees, but they're also known as Chinese land, um, flowering lantern trees. I used to have one of those. I am interested in getting another one as well. And then these are some tractor seat um, plants look at how gorgeous those leaves are i love how round they are and even the um the veining of the leaves I, I think that's really awesome and i don't really see these plants offered um as much in big box stores and obviously we've got some um, assorted flowering plants right over here it is springtime very exciting time just because i believe we are going to see even more plants i'm definitely going to feature some more but this nursery is definitely chill very simple um, you can see they've, um, they're offering a duff, you know, different types of plants like these coleus. I am interested in growing coleus. Now with coleus, you have to remember that coleus require a lot of bright light. They can take full sun. You can grow them indoors, but they do to, um, require a little bit more care if they are grown indoors. They can be spider mite prone and they don't like to um, ever really dry out. So make sure the soil still remains moist. And then we've got some Ajuga Silver Queen plants right here now these are usually used for ground covers i do like the variegation of that and there's different types of ajula ajugala plants i think that's how you pronounce it here's another coleus right over here love that deep purple um that deep purple color right here and um they are just little starter plants you can pick one of these up and then actually coleus are very vigorous growers they will grow very quickly and in order to keep it from getting leggy, you need to make sure that you're um, pruning it down and they actually propagate very easily. Here's another Ajuga um, Princess Nadia plant. I love that variegation. It almost reminds me of um, waffle plants like the Snow White waffle plant. Now these again are meant to be ground covers. Not really sure if you can grow these indoors, but needless to say, um, they are gorgeous looking plants. Here's Ajuga Bronze. 
Here's another um, version of that plant, but this one is a dark foliage plant. You guys already know I love dark, dark foliage plants. These could definitely go into like a gothic garden situation. I also love neon plants, but black plants, purple plants, very dark plants. They are stunning and then they would look really good in like a white, simple matte planter. That's what I would envision putting them in. And then we've got some um, Alg um, Algerian ivies right here and some Hydra Helix guys or you know what they, um, the, the right pronunciation would be Hedera Helix. That is an English Ivy. You guys already know the story between me and English Ivies. They're very difficult to grow, but needless to say, I still love the um, English Ivy. We've got some Fatsa Japonicas here. So um, a local plant foldy um, told me that you can actually grow these in indoors. I would like to try to grow one, but more so the variegated form. So we'll see if I can find one that is variegated and I'll try my luck on trying to grow some um, Fatsa Japonica or um, Japanese Aralia is what it's also known as the common dame. So we're going to go ahead and walk over here. We got some cacti, some palms. We've got a um, ficus tree right over here. And as you guys can see, we are now entering paradise. What I've noticed with Austin um, plant nurseries when it comes to like their indoor plants, they always have them in a massive greenhouse and their greenhouse looks like a jungle. Like as if the plants are styled in a way where they've got large trees like these ficus lyrata here. They've got several hanging baskets. They've got trailing plants and i just want to pause and take a look at all of these beautiful plants here so the first plant we've approached is this really nice looking mature aralia look at how the leaves are like strap they are dark foliage it's got that dark chocolate um, color and let's see how much it costs this one is for 110 dollars this is a false aralia so for those that shop for aralias at big box stores you can buy those exotic angel costa farms starter plants that are in like a three inch planter look at how large that aralia could potentially get when you give it the right care conditions and obviously it takes time to grow it that large but that's really cool i love looking at specimen plants like this one right here is a huge ficus lyrata or fiddle fig leaf um, tree i've been seeing a lot of those i used to not really be into fiddle fig leaves i used to have a large one as well but i didn't give it the right proper care and it ended up dying but now i am slowly trying to grow one that i bought for like 99 cents at a local grocery store called um, sprouts out in north dallas but they have some plants here this one's mixed up though this one is a lemon lemon button fern for ten dollars now with ferns i would just assume most ferns require a lot of high humidity they definitely do not want to dry out so you want to make sure that their soil remains um, moist they typically do better in a terrarium setting and then we've got some sansevieria whale fins right over here this one is for sixteen dollars in a four inch starter planter um, really like that. I actually have this specific one as well in my collection and I've had it for years where it just continued to get thicker and have more like little pups. And um, this one also, this actual nursery has the care tips and characteristics of plants. So feel free to pause the video or even screenshot that if you're interested in getting some more insights on the plants. But we're looking at a bunch of snake plants. We've got some Dracene, I mean, um, Sansevierias right over here. I wanna see how much this one costs. This one is not that bad of a price. And then we've got another large one here. I believe this is a Sansevieria Sayuri. And we've got one of my favorite um, Shafleras. This is a Shiflera Amate. So if you want an indoor type of um, tree in your home, you can actually grow that because those can get very large and you can see the price is not bad as, um, for this one right here. That is for $60 in a 10 inch planter. Um, you can trim it down and actually get it to branch out even more. I would love to see a variegated form if there is one, um, a Shiflera Amate, but that one is really nice just having the green leaves and then some like the burgundy stems. And then right over here, we have a mahogany tree braided form. This one is for $22.99 in a six inch planter. Super cute. They kind of remind me of the lucky bean plants that I saw at the great outdoors plant nursery in Austin. If you haven't seen that one, that was one of my first Austin local nursery plant tours. So definitely check that out. I'm all about supporting local plant nurseries um, just because I believe that most local plant nurseries will have a more diverse selection of plants. I do believe that their plants are going to be healthy or at least healthier. And like in terms of pests, I rarely doubt that they would actually have pests because 
local plant nurseries have the resources, the staff to truly care for the plants. This one is one of my favorite Sansevierias. This is a Sansevieria fernwood and it's actually in bloom. So whenever you have an indoor plant or a tropical plant that is in bloom, that means that that plant is number one, mature, but number two, um, very happy with its growing conditions to where it feels like it can re, you know, reproduce itself. And then right over here, we've got another Ficus lyrata. I have been seeing a lot of ficus loratas and I do miss the massive um, leaves that they can have. There are different varieties of ficus lorata. We've got some that have more um, compact growth and then we have some that can really grow um, tall, up to 20 feet tall in an indoor space. And I believe this is a philodendron variegated gigantium. I'm not 100% sure because there really wasn't a plant ID for that particular one. It's just kind of tucked in the corner. And here is another classic indoor plant that you can grow. This is a ZZ plant. You can see that the new growth comes out a little bit more neon, that bright green color, which is what I love as well to see in a plant. And this one is a large one and that's the price for it. I think it's like 150, um, but you know, for a ZZ plant that, um, isn't very hard to care for. That is not a bad price at all. So if you are a beginner to house plants and you're just discovering my channel, definitely consider getting a ZZ plant. Maybe not as big as that one, but those can actually tolerate lower light conditions and they don't need to be watered. Here we've got a bunch of Mon Monstera adansonii. These ones are just kind of growing wild on some of that um, fencing right there. And check this um, this nursery out. It's just absolutely gorgeous. I love how it's just very much those jungle vibes. And you can see right over here, we've got some Tamathophyllum. I definitely love the split leaves of a Tamathophyllum. Let's see how much this one costs right here. I'll go ahead and pan out the price. This one is only for $24, but you get such a large plant. I wish I had a larger um, home to where I could house such large plants. I have more smaller plants. I have one big Monstera Thai constellation that's about six feet tall. That's probably my largest plant indoors, but that's something that, you know, I would strive for. Now, this is awesome. This is a coffee plant, but look at how large these coffee plants are. Even if it's not variegated, what I love about the coffee plant is just the leaves. I love the texture of the leaves, the shape of the leaves, and just that natural shine of the coffee plant. And now coffee plants aren't as tricky to grow. You can actually find these a lot at big box stores as a starter plant. So um, I am actually thinking about growing a coffee plant. It's just a matter of um, when I can have the time to take care of it. I have been trying my very best not to add all of these plants to my house collection, but even um, between the time I filmed this video until um, today's premiere, I have added another seven plants to my house plant collection. So as you can see, um, it, it is a little bit challenging. I don't blame myself for wanting to buy plants because how do you um, restrain yourself from buying plants? I think that takes the joy out of plant keeping. We just have to be more cognizant about making sure we have the space for the plants as well as the plant care. That's typically what I rant about when I do these um, shopping videos. And that's actually not bad, $85. Like I would totally buy this um, coffee plant because it's already well established. It's gorgeous and it is a good price for such a large plant. Um, I, I can't imagine, you know, what some people do if they just like buy plants every single day because i can see myself doing that especially when you're you know videoing plants i am literally in a plant nursery or a big box store every day just so i can try to get you guys one hour plant shopping content um, for our daily with live premieres which typically are seven maybe six p.m and this one is a beautiful ficus audrey that one is not bad for $45. It's already in a tree form. And then we're gonna pan over here and I'll show you this one. This is another Ficus Benjamina plant. Um, that, it, you know, it's a gorgeous, you know, Ficus Benjamina are gorgeous plants, but they are also finicky. The thing is, if you move it around too much, it will drop its leaves and then like have to acclimate to its space. What a stunning, elegant looking Ficus Taniki right here, Ficus Elastica Taniki. I want to get one and grow one like this, this large. I mean, if I'm looking for a, a tree-like um, 
plant to put indoors, I would definitely do a ficus tanniki. The only thing is with ficus elastica tanniki, like with all ficus, they need a lot of bright indirect light, but they are easy to take care of. And um, I've actually grown a ficus tanniki outdoors in full sun during 100 degree Texas uh, summers, and it survived. It didn't actually burn the variegation. This large specimen of a plant is $175. That is not a bad price at all. Um, you can get instant gratification by buying large plants and you can see there's so many trees here. So when you walk into Tillery, um, this nursery right here, you really do feel like you are in a jungle. It's giving me a smaller scale version of like Plant Keeper Incorporated, which is another local plant nursery in downtown Dallas. I have a plant nursery video on that as well. So if you are just discovering my channel, definitely, um, scroll through some of my videos like i said again i do plant shopping videos daily big box stores and local plant nurseries but that cat right over there just passed by it looks like almost all local plant nurseries have a cat running around i don't know if they're just there for pest control or if that's really what it is cats plus plants this is a small bird of paradise for eleven dollars um, bird of paradise can get very large they can bloom I've, they're rarely blooming though indoors because because they require a lot of light um, and then we've got some more ficus elastica burgundies here. And I found this interesting. Do not trim or take cuttings. That's really interesting. Like, I don't know if you've known people, I've heard of people go into plant nurseries, um, arboretums, things like that, and take scissors to, to take gum cuttings of plants. I don't think that is um, honest. I think that's very unethical. Um, just buy the plant or ask if you can get a cutting. You know, some people literally just um, go into places and take cuttings. Not the best thing to do. It gives, you know, plant um, collectors a bad rap. So that's just, you know, that I just found that that's interesting. They actually had a sign that says that. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming people have attempted that before. And right over here, we've got a ficus, um, Audrey again. This one is a little bit more compact. So in order to get that kind of branching, um, they typically hack the very top off of the plant and then it just like pushes out more branching. It's kind of like that bonsai um, technique. And here we've got a very root bound, but very healthy looking ficus. I'm not ficus, Calathea mosaica. This one's for $12, but look at those roots. They are literally popping out of this um, planter. This one would be interesting to put in a hydroponic situation. And for those that don't know what hydroponics means, it's basically growing a plant in strictly just water, no um, soil substrate or any type of substrate. Those are healthy looking roots. And since it's a Calathea, if you put it in straight water you don't ever have to guess on whether you need to water it or not and i like this peperomia here this is a peperomia little tuscany for eight dollars and fifty cents not a bad price again for um, a four inch planter really like the um, the veining on the leaves and also just the light gray silver look on this peperomia i did end up getting a peperomia not too long ago i got the luna red peperomia by costa farms training tropicals i'll have to feature that soon in one of my videos but peperomia they're very easy to take care of just make sure you don't um expose them in dry areas because they are spider mite prone and then this is just another ficus um, plant, ficus tree right over there. And um, Tillery just has a bunch of small starter plants. This one's for $12. This is a watermelon peperomia. Gorgeous looking peperomia, peperomia. And what I love about it, and that's why it gets its name, is it literally has leaves that look like watermelon. Super, super cute. And then we've got a Chinese money tree plant or a UFO plant, Palia peperomoides. This one is for $9. I'm looking for a variegated version of this plant. I think they're really cute, especially when they start to mature and the, the, the stems start to really get woody. I think that's so cool. And then over here, we've got Ficus Elastica Altissima, or this is the Golden Council tree for $10, four inch starter planter. Um, this size could actually lend itself to like bonsai. I think that you can train it and maybe even keep the leaves at a smaller, um, you know, a smaller size, but we will see. I um, am definitely interested in growing a ficus in Elastica Altissima. It is one um, rubber tree I do not have, and I love just the green on green variegation. And you can see this is um, the care tips for ficus. So feel free to hit the pause button or even screenshot this video just so you can get more insights on it. You know, a lot of my plant shopping videos are meant to educate people as well as share my, um, my insights on plants. And right over here, we've got a Ficus Elastica Shivriana for $13 in a four inch starter planter. 
not a bad price at all and again this is one of those um, plants that have really declined in terms of just the pricing this was a super rare ficus elastica i would say two to three years ago a one leaf one node cutting would cost over a hundred dollars and now we've got that readily available these are actually uh, gorgeous and this is one plant for ten dollars i would have bought and maybe attempted to like wire it up and and um kind of shape it like a bonsai i think that would be really cool i haven't ever seen ficus elastica or ficus trees made into bonsai but with all of the bonsai i'm seeing and all of the braided um trees i don't see why you wouldn't be able to make it into one um i would probably try to look for one of those types of um plant sizes um, at a local Dallas nursery just because I didn't buy that but look at that high variegation on this amazing looking ficus elastica taniki look at how it is now a tree form it's got branching it's got some high variegation these leaves look like somebody painted watercolors um, ficus taniki it is a showstopper and what I like about it is it's not an expensive plant but there is so much um, going on with it that you know it is always going to be a centerpiece plant or at least i believe that it would you know steal the show in any space and now we're going to go look at hoyas this is a hoya curtsii so for my plant foldies and if you're new to my channel i call my viewers and subscribers plant foldies um for all of you guys that like Hoyas, this plant nursery has quite a bit of Hoyas to look at as well. Um, that's what I'm noticing with these Austin local plant nurseries, just a diversity of Hoyas. So we are looking at some Hoya curtsy right there. You saw the price, not a bad looking price for um, Hoyas. I've noticed some Hoyas are extremely expensive and some are cost effective. Like this one right here is um, a Hoya Hindu rope or a Hoya compacta, just a regular green version. That one's for $40. It's not a bad price, but if you get lucky and actually find an Exotic Angels Costa Farms hanging basket of Hoya Compacta at, say, Lowe's or Walmart or Home Depot, you can get it for under $20. Here is a Hoya Carnosa Tricolor for $12. Love me some Hoya Carnosa. Those are one of the more common types of Hoyas, but um, even if it's common, look at that gorgeous variegation. And what I like about Hoyas is obviously the waxy, texture of the leaves and even the variegation they look best when they are sun stressed and what sun stress means is when you're giving it bright indirect light it um, forces the plant to give um, some different variegation and then here is another hoya which the name i cannot really pronounce but you saw that in the screen um, it is starting to trail as get again and what I find interesting about Hoya is when they are shooting out new growth they shoot out these runners and then their leaves start to fill it up this one is for $90. This is a Hoya Australis on a trellis. So um, there have been questions about whether you can grow Hoya up a totem or a trellis. But as you can see, you can definitely do that. You don't always have to just have them trail on a hanging basket. I think for plant styling, hanging baskets are great. But also having um, plants that are growing up a totem just to differentiate heights would be a good way to style your um, house if you're looking for plant styling. And speaking of plant styling, look at this variegated Hoya Carii um, just attached to this bark and it's hanging. I think that this is a lovely Hoya. Um, I've never seen this um, installation before, so I've never seen Hoya kind of attached to like bark like that, but it works for me. And look at that um, leaf, it's highly variegated. Beautiful looking Hoya Carii, variegated Hoya Carii. And it's just, it's one of those Hoyas that I'm so glad I found at an actual grocery store for $7.99. I got a four inch starter planter for $7.99. So you can find plants for a good deal. You know, it depends. Sometimes you can find them um, cheaper. You know, the natural assumption is you'll find them cheaper at a big box store, but even at local plant nurseries, I've seen some plants that were extremely cheap. And here is another Hoya. I'm not 100% sure what this Hoya's um, plant ID is, but what I do know is it is massive and it is trailing and I am in love with it just because of the leaf shape, just that beautiful green color of this Hoya. You can definitely take a bunch of cuttings, although we're not allowed to take cuttings. Um, I don't think it's right, but you can take those cuttings from that um, trail of Hoya and propagate them. Hoyas are very easy to propagate as well. Um, the way I would propagate a Hoya and the way I've done it in the past is just literally taking a cutting around a node, putting it in water and just waiting for the roots to appear. 
And over here, we've got a Hoya Compacta Variegata. Nice looking one. Look at that sun stressing right there. You've got that pink and maroon red variegation. And, you know, with the Austin local nurseries, I am able to find more um, Hoya Compacta Variegatas, and that's really cool. I mean, these are only for $14. So if you want to start off with a smaller plant, um, you would be surprised how fast these um, actually grow. Some people say Hoya Compacta, especially the variegated version, is very slow growing. Um, when I had one, they actually grew fairly fast and started to trail. So, but you can see that this Hoya has some gorgeous variegation. I definitely want to add one of these. Like I definitely want to get a Hoya that's about this size and has this kind of variegation or even find one with even higher variegation. I think that the texture is gorgeous and these are for $40. So it's kind of within range of what I've seen so far for Hoya Compacta Variegadas. Um, I would love to add that to my Hoya collection. I've only got two Hoyas, Hoya Crimson um, Queen and Hoya Crimson Princess, but check this out. Look at that peach, pink, maroon variegation. Like what? who would not want to get one of these plants? Now let me know in the comments if you are a huge Hoya fan. I would love to know your insights on Hoyas. And if you're watching this live and you're in the live premiere chat, please um, say hi to us or just um, leave your insights. It's always nice to see new people in the live premiere chats. We have them um, daily at around seven o'clock when I premiere videos. And then this is another Hoya. I'm not 100% sure um, what this is, um, what the plant ID is, but I do know that it is trailing. And you can see that it is a little bit sun stressed with just some of the leaves being like a reddish tone. So that's just the interesting part of Hoyas. Now, there are people who are not really into Hoyas. Quite frankly, I wasn't into Hoyas until recently. And the more I look at them, I mean, when you're, you know, looking at plants daily, the more you start to admire just the nuances of the plant. Like for this one, even if it's just a green one, you can see that it's got a slight crinkling on the leaves. And then just touching the leaves of a Hoya, how waxy and thick they are, it's just, I don't know there's something about Hoya and there's something about Hoya that's going to get me in trouble because I'm going to be buying quite a bit of them very soon. And this is probably one of my favorite um, Peperomias. This is a Peperomia Guinea. This one is for $20. I recently got one from Green Acres, which is another local plant nursery I bought in Irving, Texas. Definitely check out the video of that as well. I um, produced one to share with you guys, but um, these Peperomia guineas are really nice. What I like about it is the pink um, outlining on the edges of the leaves are so precious. And this one is actually very happy because you can see those rat tail looking things. Those are actually blooms. And here are some more highly variegated um, Hoya Compactus. Love that. Look at that. It doesn't even look real. It looks like plastic but these are very nice specimens all of these are for $40 um, if you are in the live premiere chats or watching this video um, would you buy this Hoya for $40 let me know in the comments I'd really want to know your insights or just your opinions about that I mean some people will say $40 is quite a bit of money for a plant but you know, with Hoya Compacta Variegatas, like I think that's a fair price. So let me know if that is a fair price. Um, I haven't seen anything just ridiculously priced uh, at any of the local plant nurseries I visited in Austin. And you can see that there's just so many plants to look at right over here. Now this is super cool. Look at this variegated um, Hoya Carii in a um, crate with some sphagnum moss. And um, I, this is just really fun to see all of the ways that they display their plants. Here is another cool um, Hoya right over here. I can't pronounce this Hoya name, but for $18, that is not bad at all considering it is already trailing. You could probably trim this up even more and get a bunch of Hoya cuttings. Um, actually, after this video, I might try to look for some more Hoyas to add to my collection. 
Um, I am still on vacation and I plan to get my plant um, room set up at the front office area. Recently bought some um, grow lights, some Barina grow lights to put on my shelves. So um, stay tuned for that. I know I've been talking about doing a plant house, a plant um, tour video. Not sure if you guys are still interested. Let me know in the comments if you are. I wouldn't say I have the most extensive plant collection, but I have some plants that I definitely want to present to you in a stylish manner. This one is a Peperomia Scand uh, Scandins. Nice looking Peperomia. It looks um, somewhat delicate, but I do like the, the pointy heart-shaped leaves. And here is one of my Hoyas that I used to have. This is a Hoya Astralis Elisa. And this one, this Hoya is actually one that if you give it a lot of bright indirect light or even sun stress it, you can get some amazing variegation, some neon greens, some pinks, some purples, some creams, some blood red colors. Um, $14 is for the starting asking price by Tillery um, Nursery. And then you can see they've got even more plants right over here. I wouldn't say that their plants are necessarily as organized as the great outdoors, but this still works because they've got this like jungle vibe going on. And this is another um, Abotilon um, Savitsii. Um, this is the variegated form of a flowering maple tree. Again, these are not maple trees. They just have those maple tree um, leaves. And then the flowers are actually gorgeous. They look like lanterns. And for $7, these aren't bad at all. I rarely see these available at like nursery stores in general. And then when I looked at buying one on Etsy, it was like $18 for this starter plant. And then you have to pay for shipping. So this is another you know plant that I actually um, regret not buying in Austin. And then this is a pre bonsai plan for $65. This is a Ulmus pulva or um, a Chinese elm. I have one of those bonsais. I actually bought it at Walmart, repotted it in some actual bonsai soil, and I'm currently rehabbing it and trying to rescue it. So we will get an update on that. But you can see these um, pl flowers have already dried out, but they look like lanterns. They're super cute and you can grow them indoors. This is probably the best looking Hoya Compacta variegata I've seen so far. Look at the variegation. There is um, variegation on all of the, um, the leaves or just the foliage. That's really nice. $40 for that. And we've got some more Hoya Compacta variegata. And then right over here, we've got a bonsai. This one is a Brazilian rain tree bonsai. Um, it just needs a little bit of work, like some wiring to get some more of that shape out. And then over here that we're looking at is another Ficus triangularis variegata. Um, we've got a Hoya macrophylla right over here. That's just a display. And you can see this is also sun stressed because it's got that like um, reddish uh, tone on the leaves. Typically it's a darker green color. And that is an absolutely gorgeous Hoya hanging basket right there. I just wish I knew the Hoya um, plant ID. So if you know what plant foldies or anybody viewing this video currently, please leave that in the comments. And you can see they've got some more um, hanging baskets of Hoyas. And you can see that there is just a long um, runner right over here that is eventually going to get filled up with some beautiful um, Hoya leaves. Love the shape of this one particularly. I believe this is a Hoya carii, just a regular green form. And what else have we got? We got some more hanging baskets um, of Hoya. And I'm glad that, you know, when I visited first thing in the morning, there weren't anybody else shopping here. So it makes it easier for me to really feature the plants with having without having to like dodge people. Because obviously when I'm doing these videos, I never want to just get anybody in randomly. Um, I want to make sure that people are comfortable with me holding up my camera and filming. So... Here is a Diefenbachia reflector. These ones aren't as healthy looking, unfortunately, at least in my opinion, but they are large size. And we've got some Trade Scanthia albos right over here. Nice looking Trade Scanthia. This one's nice and full. This one's for $12.50. Not a bad price at all. And actually you can get multiple cuttings out of this and even get more out of it. Trade Scanthia are beautiful plants. They can be hanging basket plants, but in order to keep it from being leggy, you've got to constantly pinch back at its leaves you know, cut it back and you can actually use those cuttings, root them in water. They're very easy to propagate. They'll take like one to two days and you'll see some roots easily in water. And this one is another plant. This one is an I, um, 
I can't really pronounce the I Irenis or however you pronounce the name. This is another plant that I believe was sourced out from Steve's Leaves. So Steve's Leaves is a popular um, rare plant or just a plant nursery out at Louisville, Texas. And I can recognize there um, that this is one of the plants that they may have sourced out for Tillery, um, this Tillery nursery. And then right over here, we've got some um, Alocasia Mickey Mouse. Um, starters for $18. I ended up getting one that was a little bit larger from um, Famous in Oregon. It's a no another local plant nursery in Prosper, Texas, but you can see the gorgeous variegation of an Alocasia Mickey Mouse. Definitely into it. I would definitely um, buy another one. Um, it hasn't given me any problems. Um, actually, the only thing with Alocasia is that you have to maintain higher humidity levels. Otherwise, they are very much prone to spider mites. Um, I have just humidifiers all over my house just to keep the humidity levels at a decent um, amount because it could get, you know, it gets very dry when we start to run our AC or even our heating. So just be mindful of the kind of plants you bring in. Alocasias are one that requires a lot of bright um, indirect light as well as um, humidity. Here is another Alocasia Yucatan Princess. I saw my first Yucatan Princess at the Great Outdoors, another local plant nursery in Austin. I would actually say that is the premier local plant nursery in Austin, but Tillery is um, just as good as well. And you can see that with just the diversity of plants that they have. I'll say that their pricing is actually fair, like $18 is not a bad price for an alocasia, especially one that you may not always run into. Love the metallic um, gunmetal shine to the leaves and even the stems, you know, that's the thing about alocasia, they've got a lot of interest from either the stems, the undersides of the leaves or even the leaf shape. And speaking of, um, you know, color interest, Aglonema Spring Snow, this one is for $45, not a bad price at all. It's considering that Aglonema um, take a while to get this large, they're slower growing. They are still my favorite plant to grow because of the colors, the stem colors, the leaf shapes, just all the varieties of Aglonema. And this one is gorgeous in the fact that you can literally light up a, a dark space in your home because um, it will not revert its variegation and it can tolerate lower light conditions. Now with Aglonema, as I've stated in previous videos, you definitely do not want to overwater it. Um, that is really the only way you can kill an Aglonema. They can tolerate being underwatered and actually not be watered as much. They, they prefer that. Right over here is just a classic Monstera Deliciosa for $18. Do you guys remember when Monstera Deliciosa was like the it plant, everybody had to get one and they were a little bit more pricey? I'm just glad that Monstera Deliciosas are still readily available. I do love the green form, even though everybody's about the variegated Monsteras. I think green plants are just as gorgeous as variegated ones. I would just say variegated ones just give us a little bit more allure. But if you think about what plant is gonna be healthier and easier to take care of, it's always gonna be the green version of the plant. Here we've got a big red um, bird's nest anthurium. You could see that the, the, the roots are literally busting out of this um, planter. This one is for $22, uh, dollars. Um, but look at how healthy these roots are. With healthy roots, you wanna see them be bright, you wanna see them be thick, you wanna see them not being brownie, brownie or mushy. Um, this, was, this would actually be a good anthurium to convert into hydroponics and just grow in straight water because the roots are so established. Love that. Here is one of my favorite Dracaenas, even though it doesn't look like a Dracaena. This one's for $17.50. This is just the Dracaena Florida Beauty love the white speckling variegation that this one has this one remains compact this one does require brighter light conditions in order to have that high variegation the lower um, light you give it the less variegation it'll give you and it, here is another alocasia i haven't seen in person this is an alocasia tigrina look at the stems i think the stems are what's very interesting about it and also just the very narrow sharp um, arrowhead leaves um, I like that a lot, but just the stems itself have such a cool um, pattern on it. Not a bad price either for an alocasia. I wouldn't say these are the most healthy specimens, but I think you can work with it. Just make sure that, you know, you treat it for a pest if there's any potential pests just kind of looming over whenever you see that. 
and we'll pan over here and look at all of these um, plants like look at this large ficus lyrata we have this beautiful variegated um, hibiscus um, tree um, we've got some uh, prayer plants we've got some plants that have been repotted in larger plants like those sansevierias some type of philodendron and you can see that this variegation on this um, variegated hibiscus tree is so gorgeous and it looks like they are air layering it I would definitely love to get an air layer of this plant. I'm actually going to look for that because that's a plant that, um, I don't know, I just love the leaf shape and obviously it being variegated with that cream variegation just adds another level to it. Um, let me know in the comments if you've grown a variegated hibiscus tree. That would be sweet to actually get the plant ID, um, care tips and all of that. And over here we've got a classic syngonium, not syngonium, um, Aglonema Silver Bay. Sorry guys, Aglonema Silver Bay. Very large looking Aglonema. It's one that is very easy to take care of. It's a common one and you can see the price is not bad at all for such a large plant. And this is my first time actually seeing this and what I'm most interested in is the white stems of this one. This one is an Aglonema Legacy. That one is for $55 in a 10 inch um, planter not a bad price at all actually that is a very very good price for such a large aglonema typically you would find aglonemas more so in the 65 70 range um, when you buy them but look at that i love how um the leaves it looks like an aglonema white margin that was hybridized with an aglonema stripe the aglonema white margin has like very distinct white stems has white margins like literally the edging of the leaves are white like this one but then it has um just a plain green foliage this one has the stripes and gosh this is another plant another aglonema i should have bought because i've never seen this particular aglonema at any of my big box stores in north dallas or our local plant nurseries so for my local plant nurseries out in dallas texas let's see about getting this aglonema legacy look at that absolutely gorgeous very elegant looking plant and when you put those two together i mean why would you not be into aglonema right like that is my um agenda for those watching my pl uh, my plant videos you've got to get into aglonema they're so awesome why would you not like them like right here this is one of my favorite aglonemas this is an aglonema golden madonna for 28 dollars. just because look at the stems of the of the the plant i mean i really like the white stems i mean this does have a lot of um, variegation going on on the leaves but for me the stems are such a good highlight for it since it's already um, very busy on the leaves just having white stems it it really balances out the plant the look of the plant and right over here we've got another big um, philodendron right there and then we've got another philodendron i think this one is a philodendron gloriosum gorgeous looking plant um, i have never had a phil philodendron gloriosum and look at that sport variegation there a very subtle sport variegation but needless to say that one particular um, leaf is variegated nice looking plant love the the shape of the plant as well as just the velvety texture of the leaves and then we're going to keep looking at this aglonema legacy would you buy this plant let me know in the comments below or even in the live premiere chat that is such a gorgeous looking aglonema and i love how large the leaves are already and then we've got some more gorgeous plants here. I love all of the tall plants they have, the hanging baskets. This one right here is just already bursting out of its um, plant. And then right over here, we've got an Epipremnum panatum, Cebu Blue Pothos. Love that as well. I actually have it hanging in my um, dining room, um, over my dining room kitchen area and that one looks really nice i ended up buying like a um, hanging basket that was more of like a shelf so when i do my plant um house plant tour you will see that but i love me some epipremnum panatum cebu blue i actually love any type of epipremnum panatums I, I love the more narrow shape on the leaves and we've got some pothos right here so everybody that is new to house plants pothos are the easiest beginner friendly plants you can get any pothos and they will bring you joy they will not die on you as long as you don't really overwater them like this one right over here beautiful pearls in jade um, epipremnum panatum 
I mean, not Panatum, Arium. I think that this is not a pearls and jade just because of the um, very con con the high contrast on the variegations. I think that's more of a pearls and jade versus an Enjoy. So here we've got a golden pothos. Um, this one's a cute one for 350. I think that the price is a little high for that one, but needless to say, it's still a cute looking plant. We've got some more Cebu Blue Pothos right over there. Um, actually, we've got a couple of Epipren and Panatums right over there. Not a bad price at all. Again, these are um, plants that you can have trail down a hanging basket or grow up a totem. Now, if you grow up a totem pole or some moss pole or a plank, the leaves will get very large and start to fenestrate. Look at this massive tomathophyllum right over here. This is one that is, it's most likely have been growing in this pot for quite some time. It's pushed out so many aerial roots that I'm sure that it's getting a lot of its nutrients uh, from the air as well. What a nice looking tomathophyllum. That one is also on display, definitely not for sale. I could see why I wouldn't sell such a large specimen plant when it gets to that point. Um, We've got some more large Aglonema Silver Bays right over here. I don't have as large of an Aglonema Silver Bay. I'm actually thinking about just getting one that size. And we've got another Aglonema um, Golden Madonna right over here. Gorgeous looking variegation. And then also just the white stems. It's just wow. Amazing looking plant. And it's another easy to care for plant. It doesn't revert on its variegation. And then we've got some Epipremnum Panatum Cebu Blues on totems. You can see that it's already reached the top of the totem, but if you extend it, it will get larger leaves that are fenestrating. And then this is some type of um, philodendron. I would think this is a philodendron Benatophyllum, um, but we will see. I'm not 100% sure since it didn't give me the plant ID. So we're, we're, it's some type of philodendron. And what else do we have here? We've got some more philodendron gloriosums for $28. These ones in, are in a starter plant. So that's pretty cool. And we've got some more plants right over here. Some heteraceum, some pothos, some panatums. And then we've got more larger plants right over here. This massive um, variegated maho tree and another Aglonema Legacy. There's two of them, or actually three Aglonema Legacies. I swear I should have bought this plant. I really regret not doing it. But again, it's one of those things where when you're plant shopping, you, you don't want to like just go broke because I've already gone broke, you know, doing all of these videos. I don't mind it because I get to look at plants, but I have to give myself credit. As many beautiful plants that I've run into in Austin, I was really good about just buying one single plant to take back home. But this Aglonema Legacy, like, that's something I need to get. That is on my wish list for Aglonemas. Um, but let's see, what other plants do we have right around this corner? More hanging um, crates. This one is a gorgeous looking Philodendron bilitiae in a hanging crate. I love Philodendron bilitiae just for the narrow leaves, but also the gorgeous orange stems. Again, the stems, the different types of colors of stems. It's, it's one that I like to add to my collection. I'd love to get a variegated bilitiae, but those are a little bit more pricey. And then I've got a philodendron, heteraceum, lemon lime, one of my favorite plants as well, just because I love the neon colors. Mine sits inside my chimney at my home and it lights it up. And then we've got a philodendron, pink, I'm not philodendron, pink diamond um, cordyline plant or a tea plant. This cordyline pink um, diamond is gorgeous. I love that it has just the pink um, lining and this one is not a bad price at all. $38 for a 10 inch um, planter. They've got two massive um, pink diamond cordylines right there. Cordylines do best growing outside just because they're so spider mite prone when you grow them indoors. Although I am gonna attempt to grow mine in a hydroponic situation. And if you do give it just like direct um, sunlight, it will give you the best coloration. Here is a China doll plant, a large one as well. Um, I have a starter one that I got from Exotic Angels Costa Farms. 
and it's doing fine for me. This one is a philodendron red imperial. Sometimes you can mistaking it as a philodendron um, black cardinal, but this is the red imperial. Those can get as large as two to three feet in width um, at its mature size. But could you could see all of these plants, they're just so gorgeous. Tillery um, Plant Nursery is amazing as well. And they've got all sorts of different types of plants. We've got some philodendron ring of fires right over here. Um, let's see how much they cost. Not a bad price at all. You can get these though at big box stores and grocery stores. So anything above like $30, you can get better pricing at um, a big box or a grocery store. And you see that these are some not so variegated philodendron um, Paraiso Verdes. And the thing about philodendron Paraiso Verdes, it's not the light that gives it the variegation, it's literally the temperature. So the warmer the temperature is, the better variegation that that plant's gonna get. I find that quite interesting as a characteristic of a plant, but that is the fact. And then we've got some more plants right over here, a whole row of begonias. But I did want to show you this. So this is the um, uh, Chinese lantern tree, the abu, um, abotilon. So you can see these are the flowers. They look like lanterns. Um, they are also known as the uh, flowering maple tree. But you can grow this indoors. I've seen some plant YouTubers actually feature this in their plant collections. Um, I definitely want to get one again. I ended up killing the other one just because I literally neglected it and not watered it. But that, those are supposedly easy to care for plants. So we will try our hand again soon enough. And then we can see that there is some more, there are some more like specimen plants, display plants. We've got a whole hanging basket full of philodendron micans. I recently got a philodendron micans variegated cutting from another um, local plant nursery called Cultivar. That one is based in Houston. So um, look out for that video as well. I am very happy that I've been productive with the plants that I've been able to feature, the local nurseries I've been able to film this week. So I hope you guys are enjoying this content. If you are, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. The like button is just one way to really help me out. I, you know, I put a lot of effort to edit these videos and um, have these available for our live premiere. So if you are watching this video, if you are in the live premiere chats, please make sure you hit the like button. And you can see this one is another Syngonium lance leaf. I do like the, the leaf texture of that. It's very narrow. And, you know, with Syngoniums, they have a lot of diversity in the colors, the variegation, the stems, the, the, the growth patterns, just shapes of their leaves. There's just a lot going on with um, Syngoniums. I would say Syngoniums are my second favorite plant to grow aside from the Aglonema. Although I feel like Syngoniums might take the top back because some of my Aglonemas are not um, being as friendly to me as possible, meaning that they are um, just, you know, having some leaves die. So I'm not 100% sure what's going on with my Aglonema. And then here is a um, Syngonium Wallandii. This one is actually on sale. Not a bad price at all. $10 for a Syngonium Wallandii. These are still pretty uncommon. And then we've got some more... Calatheas, assorted Calatheas and prayer plants right over there. Nice looking plants. Now this is a plant that I used to have. I can't really pronounce it, but this is that stainless steel plant. I remember buying this at Callaway's and this is a plant that was actually sourced out from um, Steve's Leaves. What I like about this plant is just that variegation. The leaf shapes are very like um, random. They've got some narrow leaves. The leaves are just um, kind of crooked nice looking um plant i really wanted to buy this and this is only for 12 dollars um this is another plant guys i keep saying that i've regretted a lot of plants but i really do but you know what they say you should never have regrets in life i think that if ever i do another plant tourism video local plant nursery and i find a plant like that i'm just gonna buy it because these are plants that i don't really see in my local plant nurseries and then when i checked out how much this would cost to buy online it was like 18 dollars plus the shipping versus just paying the 12 dollars and there's no shipping 
and I get to pick the plant, but that is a gorgeous plant. Let me know in the comments, my plant folies, if you've ever um, grown that particular plant. I think it's one of those plants that are not um, usually grown by a lot of houseplant collectors, but I think it's a unique plant, but you can see there are so many beautiful plants here. love blooming anthurium plants this one is for 28 dollars in a six inch planter so this one actually is a lot fuller than what you would see at walmart now walmart sells anthuriums in six inch planters for 24 dollars, but nowhere near as full and lush as this look at the beautiful blooms on the leaves some people think that that's a little bit weird but i really love um I just really love it. I love just the plant itself. I love the um, the leaves, just how lush and full they are. I am going to go convert that into another hydroponic situation because anthurium roots are very thick as well. And I would think they would make great candidates to grow in a bowl with water. And I'm not 100% sure what this... Um, this philodendron is i don't know if this looks like a philodendron cellum um but just like a, a mature version but that is such a gorgeous looking plant um notice how um, philodendron get very woody as they get mature um that's just a nice looking plant i i definitely am going to be visiting some like conservatories and arboretums so i can see more mature plants and this um, table here has a bunch of begonia. This one is a begonia lunaris. Nice looking begonia right here. And it's not a bad price for $10. I believe it's $10. Now they, the staff was telling me that these specific begonias were sourced out from Steve's Leaves. I can kind of recognize that because Steve's Leaves is a plant nursery that really specializes in begonias. Like this one right here, Begonia Frida, $15. But look at how gorgeous the coloration and variegation on the leaves are. Um, I would love to be able to grow some more begonias there's one begonia that i wanted to buy and it was this one right here this is a begonia dimitri for 16 dollars it reminds me of a um, begonia maculata but i like the fact that it's got more like dusty variegation not just like um very like pronounced polka dots really nice looking one this one is an angel wing type begonia it definitely needs to have like some kind of steak to keep it up but um this was actually one of the begonias i asked the staff if i could like buy a cutting but unfortunately they didn't have a mother plant to do a cutting because i didn't really want to buy it for 16 dollars and right over here we've got another um begonia right here this is a silver spirit begonia beautiful looking begonia um, I love the edging on the leaves. And that's the thing about Steve's leaves. They have so many amazing begonia hybrids and introductions. Like this one right here. Love that ghostly silver um, color for this one. $16 for the Sally Salvi um, begonia. And I just like the texture of this leaf right as well. Um, I don't know if there's anybody out there or on YouTube that specifically grow begonia or have a channel dedicated to it. If you guys know of any um, YouTubers that just grow specifically begonias and have begonia content, please leave that in the comments or in the live premiere chats. I would love to be able to research that. Um, I definitely want to make more connections with other YouTubers that either do plant shopping videos or just um, plant content in general. This is a lot of fun for me to just be able to show you guys plants like this talk about my insights, grow a plant community. There's just a lot of joy that I get out of it. So thank you for those who are continuing to tune into my live, um, live videos and just my shopping videos on a daily basis. But as you guys can see, all of these begonias I honestly would have bought. Um, like this one right here is a very interesting looking one. This one's a cross begonia. So um, this one is a begonia King Gianna for $40. But look at the leaves. Like look at how it's just kind of like got that nuclear looking um, look to it. And then right over here, we've got a begonia silver dollar nice looking silver foliage i love the um the red undersides of the leaves and again these are all um sourced out from steve's leaves so i've tried to buy a couple of plants of steve leaves plants um sometimes i miss out on the auctions 
I did one time a pickup at Steve's Leaves. That is a plant nursery I would love to be able to like visit and actually video blog. So if anybody knows any connections with Steve's Leaves or how you would do that, let me know or um, you know connect with me because Steve's Leaves, Louisville is literally only about a 15 to 20 minute drive from where I'm based at in North Dallas. And I would love to see that, but look at these begonias. Like why would you not wanna go to Steve's Leaves? And it's really um, cool that Tillery um, Plant Nursery has them. This is another begonia, for instance, that I would definitely buy. This is a begonia black fancy, another dark foliage begonia. Look at that. There is so much going on with this begonia. I even love like the maroon stems and how they're fuzzy. And speaking of maroon, look at this. This is a begonia coriaceae slash um, crossed with a raja. Look at that. And then what's interesting is if you um, put this begonia in a certain lighting condition, I'm sure that these leaves would actually um, shine and just be bright and fiery. And what else do we have here? We've got some bromeliads. You can't go to a plant nursery and not see a bromeliad. Bromeliads are everywhere. And um, we also will see begonia maculatas. I remember when begonia maculatas three to four years ago, it's really that sweet spot three to four years ago where they were more um, heavily um, sought after and they were considered more uncommon and rare, but now you can see them pretty much everywhere. Here we've got a gorgeous begonia U489. So it doesn't even have like an official name, but it's a definitely a hybridized begonia from Steve Leaves. Look at that. I love the yellow undersides of the leaves. So that's one of those um, begonias. I haven't really seen yellow undersides. So that's really cool. And obviously I love gray neutral colors on plants as well. That would be a, a great plant to put in like a pink pot or some pot that has a pop of color just because it's a little bit more neutral but I can't get over all of that. And then we've got a Dracaena. This one is called the Dracaena Moonlight. Um, this one is for $16, not a bad price at all. And this plant is very, very easy. Doesn't, um, can tolerate lower light conditions, doesn't need a lot of water, isn't really susceptible to a lot of pests and they can grow very large. So another beginner plant, and then we've got another massive um, philodendron. I'm not 100% sure what this philodendron is, but what I am 100% sure is this philodendron took a while to grow and it is absolutely gorgeous. It looks like a work of art. Love seeing massive plants like this. Um, you know, whenever you see a large plant, like even that philodendron bilitiae right over there, you know that there was a lot of care that was put into place with the philodendron that size. Um, they take a while to grow, but once you grow them that size, you can really see that, um, you know, most people, they would be attached to it. Like I wouldn't want to sell my Monstera Thai constellation, even if somebody were to um, offer me quite a bit of money for it just because the journey it took it took me about three years to grow it to be about six feet tall i remember getting it as an import it was like a two leaf um slightly rooted cutting that i was like babying i was like such a helicopter plant parent at the time and over here we've got a dracaena song of india gorgeous looking Dracaena. This one I used to see at Lowe's at a big box store. Now this is probably one of the most finicky Dracaenas you will see because this one actually needs a lot of light. Um, you know, if you don't give it a lot of light, it will definitely drop its leaves. It actually acts more like a ficus plant rather than a Dracaena. And we are just going to pan over here and look at a couple more plants and then pretty much end this video just because we've kind of circled around. But we we see that there are some more smaller versions of Aglonema right over there. Some more trailing plants. We we got, we got some Raphis palms, but this one is an Aglonema Siam Snow White. Honestly, this looks like an Aglonema Spring Snow, um, an Aglonema um, Wintery Wine House. They all look very similar. So not sure why this one is a Aglonema Siam White um, Snow. It just might just be a different name. And then we've got another Philodendron Bilitiae right over here. I would love to just get a normal Bilitiae. Now, most of them are being sold for $20 in this size, but if I can find one for like 15, I would definitely nab it just cause it's such a nice looking philodendron and I would love to get it to like grow as large as the ones we've seen. This one is a really cool Anthurium silver blush cross Michelle. Look at that variegation and just look at how it's got that pastel ghostly look on the, the leaves. Very nice looking one. 
and these are all in-house propagation so i also like seeing local plant nurseries create their in-house propagations because you know that there was a little bit more care for it it wasn't sourced out from just like a grower nursery and right over here we've got some more um orchids this one are oncidium orchids so i thought that they were dendrobian orchids but this is oncidium orchids i have yet to check out that one orchid channel but i will definitely do that but look at how gorgeous those um flowers are they definitely look very um petite and just very delicate but i do like the side the shapes of them <laughs> Um, I definitely want to add a couple of orchids to my collection, maybe one of each, like a Philonopsis orchid, a Vanda orchid, this orchid that I can't really pronounce. Like, look at this. Look at all of the things that are going on with this um, orchid. So cool. I like just that it looks like brush strokes or ink strokes on the, the blooms. Um, so I like the fact that this um, Tillery plant nursery has a lot of um, varieties of plants. They've got some healthy looking plants. I like the look and I also like the fact that it's not very boutique-y. Sometimes I just want to be in a space of plants where they just have more of a jungle vibe versus a very stylistic plant nursery but anyways i hope you guys enjoy this plant nursery um part two of the great the um the great outdoors plant nursery is coming up but as always please subscribe and hit the like button for me i'll see you on the next one bye